If you want to set up and do your own still life, you can really just use whatever materials you have on hand. Here in my art room, I have a lot of stuff, but at home, you will probably have plenty of things that you can use too. Let me show you some things that I use when I'm doing a still life. So here I have a tray to set my still life up on. That's really optional. You could just set your still life up on a table, but if you're not sure that you can leave it up and you wanna be able to move it around, maybe to get different lighting, it's nice to have it on something that you can move or adjust and change the position of it. I've also got a piece of a sheet, like an old bed sheet, a blanket, a curtain, just some kind of drapery that you can use to give yourself a background is helpful. And I have some just regular little household items. These happen to be fake fruit from the craft store, but you can use real fruit, you can use um, flowers. You could really, you don't have to use the traditional vase of flowers, bowl of fruit kind of materials. You can make a still life that is a cowboy boot and a soccer ball and, um, you know, a pencil sharpener. I don't know. Those things don't really go together. It might be better to pick things that have a common theme, but the things in your still life don't have to be these traditional type of items. Now to make my still life have kind of a background, I usually take something to prop up a background. So I'm gonna use a binder. Really anything that will stand up. And then I can use this and drape the cloth over it. I'm gonna adjust it a little bit here to make it a little better looking. Okay, so now I have my tray and my binder standing up with this drapery on top of it just so I have this nice little area to put my items. Um, it, you could also use a cloth with a, with a pattern on it if you want to, but just make sure that it is not going to distract from the main objects in your picture. So now I can take my objects and start to think about how do I want to arrange them. And you want to think about the, um, the composition of the things you're putting together. So I'm just going to toss these on here. Okay. Right now, I have some things that are tall, some things that are short. It's also nice to have some things that are, uh, well, think about if, what you want. Some of your items might be organic shapes, like these apples. They are not exactly a circle. They kind of have bumps and knobs, like the pear shape. It's not a perfect shape, so if you make a mistake and a line is a little off, it's still going to look like a pear. Whereas if you have something like this teapot that's like a cylinder, or say you had a vase that was very symmetrical, sometimes those are more challenging to draw because if you get something wrong, you can really tell. So you decide what kind of items are gonna work best for you. Um, flowers are another good example of a, a, um, an organic item that if you get the lines off, it can still really look like a great flower even if it's not exact. As far as arranging these, I want them to be interesting and I want them to be balanced looking. So right now, I just sort of tossed them on there, but I've got a tall item over here, and then some small items over here, and it's kind of in an L shape, which is a, a definitely a, a legit way to do a composition, so I could leave it like that. But you could also just sort of play around and be like, do I want these to be sitting up? Maybe I want this to go here. You wanna think about color contrast, like I probably don't wanna put the green pear next to the green pot, so I'm gonna put that one over there. Um, and I, I like the contrast of the colors, but I'm just gonna play around, turn things this way and that, and think about the positioning of your items. Another consideration you want to think about when you're setting up your still life is your lighting. Right now, I have on the main lights in my room, which is a lot of lights, a lot of different light sources is gonna, going to create a diffused light in your area. So I added a little spotlight here, just a little desk lamp. Now this is helping and I could have both light sources on and I can kind of control where the light is coming from and decide where do I like these shadows? Do I want the light from above? Do I want it like coming way from the side? And just changing where the light source is is really gonna change a lot about your still light. So play around with that. I might want to even go over and turn the, the main lights off and only use this spotlight. So let's see what that looks like. Now that I have the lights off in the room, the lighting situation is a lot more dramatic looking. The light that I have here, the only light I have is this little desk lamp. And by changing where it is positioned, I can really create 
a different look in my still life. So I'm just going to play around with what direction the light is coming from. Just having the one light source is going to give you stronger highlights like this white shiny area in the apple and along places on this pot. Some highlights here and it's going to give you more dramatic shadows behind the objects. So think about how you want it to look. One more thing I want to mention is that if you're working with still life, sometimes you don't have the opportunity to leave the still life set up. Um, if you're using real fruit instead of fake fruit, then you don't want the fruit to sit there and start to go bad over the, the days that you might be working on the project. So you may want to consider taking a photograph of your work, especially if you are not sure you're going to be able to leave your setup in one place for a long time. Maybe you set up on the kitchen table, but we need to clear it off later. Taking a photo means you can go back to that photo for reference so that you can continue working on your still life and always have that same viewpoint. It also helps so that you aren't sitting down to work at it one day and you're here. And then the next day you accidentally put your chair too far to the left and you're here. Because the scene that you're seeing, the way the, the apples and the teapot are turned is different depending on where you put your chair. So taking a photo can give you a consistent observation place to go and look at how everything is looking. When you're looking at your composition, you can also decide how do you want your composition to look based on your viewpoint. Here I've got my camera a little lower so that I have the tall item looking really tall and then these items being small and short. If you want to fill the space differently, sometimes you don't have to move the items at all. You can just move the camera and have more of a downward view. Now, even though this item is taller, spatially on my page, it's taking up less room. It's not way taller than these items and they kind of fill in the area more like a triangle. So just play around with that. Think about the view, whether you're looking down from low or from above or from the left or the right. I think I like it right here. <laughs>